Welcome to the New York Launch Pod, the New York Press Club award-winning podcast on the most interesting new startups, businesses, and openings in the New York City area. I'm your host and New York attorney, Hal Cooper-Smith, and in this episode, we are talking about online shopping and taking on Amazon locally with Maya Komarov, founder of ShopIn.NYC, an e-commerce platform helping local businesses fight against the online giant. Here's Maya. It's really amazing what we see is that when you have retail real estate today in the city, you cannot think about that as just the place that people come to your store. As I said, like you need to think how the inventory come fast to the, to the customers. And that's something that they cannot do without us. They don't have the infrastructure to do that. But before we go to the interview, if you haven't already, remember to sign up for our monthly newsletter for unique content and insights at nylaunchpod.com and subscribe to the podcast on your favorite listening app. And this episode's sponsor is ResQ, New York State's premier residential rental compliance platform. Have you rented out residential property in New York State? If so, Odds are that you are not compliant with the Housing Stability and Tenant Protection Act enacted by New York State in 2019. That's right, 2019. And if you don't follow the law, your tenant may be legally able to stay in the property beyond the length of the lease, you won't be able to increase the rent by the desired amount, or you may be forced to pay for damages to the property out of your own pocket instead of from the security deposit. ResQ is designed to solve all of those problems and more. Go to resqme.com, enter in some basic lease information, and ResQ takes care of the rest so you can relax and be more profitable. That's resqme.com, R E Z C U E M E.com. And with that, let's go to the interview. Shopping local in New York City, living wages digital platform. This sounds too good to be true. (laughs) Yeah, I think uh, we see that, you know, with the pandemic, what I saw is that we go to Amazon all the time because we want this everything store experience, getting stuff to the door. And when I tried to do that with local stores, even if they have e-com, I couldn't get the same experience. Like, I had to go to five different e-com to really get everything in five different boxes and pay five time deliveries to, to the door. And when you think about that, like if they cannot compete in that, in that environment and they cannot get the power of scale, even if they have the move to e-com. So I start to see, to think like how we bring them to serve their communities because if you think about the e-com and online purchasing, it's not just about the site and the, and the store. It's a lot about the logistics. Like Amazon now open warehouses all around the city because they understand that the first that will have the inventory in the city and the first that will come to the customers is going to win. In the last maybe 15 years, online commerce left the community because it was more focused about shopping online, but now it goes really back because it's all about same day. How businesses that already have that their inventory in the city and they're already part of those communities, how they can compete and how they can bring their items. And what we found that they cannot compete because they don't get the traffic. Their inventory is not visible as Amazon, it's not convenient to shop there. And also, even if they get an order online, if it's 10 minutes drive, they will ship it to you by UPS. So we build a new model that actually leverage all the real estate and the inventory and the stores that are in the city to be the first to serve the communities and to first New York. And that's by 
you know, building a new model because uh, we don't need the warehouses like Amazon. We don't need the real estate. It's already exists. We just need to make it convenient. So we connect all the e-com into all the stores into one platform and people can shop. You can go and shop whatever you want. An average order come from three different stores. And when we get the own order, when shopping NYC get order, they send the order to the to the stores to fulfill them. So you mentioned that this was something that you were thinking about during the pandemic. Was this something that you were also thinking about before the pandemic in terms of making shopping more local and more digital? Yeah, I started the company in, in 2017 with that mission to make the neighborhoods more digital uh, and more convenient. But I started with service businesses and the first product that I started drive people to go to the, to the stores. When the pandemic arrived, I first couldn't send people to the stores. But the second thing is I didn't have a solution for retailers and I understood the big opportunity with the retailers and we develop also shop in as another product to be able to, to provide that need. So how does this all work? You're getting the traffic and the stores are fulfilling the orders, but can I order from two different stores in two different locations? And then how does, how do I get one package that seems so foreign to me? So the way that it works is that every, we have a cutoff at 10 a.m. Everybody that order by 10 a.m. get it the same day. Otherwise you get it. Get in there early. We have the cutoff. We split the city into routes. We have drivers that go around the city, pick up all the bags that the stores fulfilled and prepared into one sorting location. We sort it back to the orders of the customers and we send it out for delivery. How many drivers do you have at this moment? Ten. And something that's really important to you is that you're paying all of them a living wage. Why is that important to you? It's very important for us because we understand that shopping NYC is is more than just a store. It's a movement. And people really want to make sure that when they shop in a store, it's it's good for their community and everybody in the community is treated well. And when people approach us and say like that's amazing that we have now this opportunity to to shop in in the city as an alternative to Amazon they ask by, we want to make sure that you are not, you know, you're treating well the delivery people and the stores. And as a, and as a DNA, because we, we see us as the platform for the community to get together, we said, like, we need to make, be transparent. We need to tell them, like, if this is a platform for the community to work together, we cannot, like, hide something. And because we didn't plan to hide and we also didn't... Um, it was important for us to make sure that everybody is treating well because in that way, people love and want to wake up in the morning and serve the community in the best way possible. We have decided to pay the delivery people $25 an hour. And we also make it public. Like we share it with the customers and it's on our website and everybody can understand uh, what we are doing here. Well, it's a wonderful mission. And in terms of the community, is there a premium on the products because you're paying a living wage or does it come out of the stores? How, did, how are you able to make the economics work? Yeah, so it um, it's really depends on the order value and it's a mix between uh, the price of the product, marketplace fee that the stores are paying to us and also delivery fee. Like if you order... Above sixty dollar, it's free, and below that, it costs like five ninety five. So that's um, how we make sure that also the stores they pay us fees. You know, they can pay with their based on the margin that they have, and it's changing between different industries. So, how are you able to get stores on board your platform? Let's start with the first store. My, you say I want to create this community for shopping local, then you walk into a store and say, will you join my platform? What was that conversation like? 
Actually, it's not my platform. <laughs> it's the Shopping NYC platform. It's New York City Stores platform. That's what how we present that. And we ask them if they want to come together, if they want to work together and sell everything and serve everybody together and get the power of scale. And their answer is really, really positive. They see that as a, another channel. The reason that they, they're very positive, and now we have very interesting data to share, like they do thousands of dollars every month in incremental re- revenue. And the most interesting thing is that it, it increased their catchment area. Like we have stores today that get customers from four or five mile radius. For them, it's no brainer. They don't have upfront cost to join. They just need to make sure that they follow the rules of fulfillment because it's a community. And this community is fulfilling the orders by... It's not like one warehouse that fulfills everything. And that's uh, the decentralized warehouse model that we build that allow everybody, all of them to, to participate. I think it's, um, it's really... Amazing what we see is that when you have real, retail real estate today in the city, you cannot think about that as just the place that people come to your store. As I said, like you need to think how the inventory come fast to the to the customers. And that's something that they cannot do without us. They don't have the infrastructure to do that because they don't get enough traffic just to their website. What technology does any of these stores need to participate in the Shop in NYC platform? Um, they need to have e-commerce in place from their side. Like a Shopify um, store? Exactly, like a Shopify or all the other guys. And um, then we mirroring their store into, into Shop in NYC. So we update the inventory a few times a day. And we just sync so they don't need to update something else in our side. Yeah, and, and then they need to use our fulfillment um, platform to review the orders that they get and confirm that they fulfill all their orders. So now it's a no-brainer for any New York City store to use the Shop in NYC platform. But when you were starting out, I have to imagine you were met with a lot of skepticism. What was that like? Actually, I think people, when COVID hit, were very open to try. And I think now where when they see that they get thousands of dollars every month, it's it's not a question. And it's just, you know, we are going to be better. We are going to invest more on the infrastructure. We are going together to be the first that come to every household in New York. And and that's the mission of that. Like we need to be the first, not Walmart or not Amazon. I don't know if you saw, but yesterday, New York Times wrote that Amazon is taking over New York. They deliver 2.4 million packages a day just in New York City. So I think we, we need to bring some back to the stores in the city. What are some of the goods that people can get on the Shop in NYC platform? Actually, we have more than... 12 categories and more than 60,000 products in the store. And it's really growing every day. They can get essentials. They can get wine, um, gifts, toys, pet supply, like almost everything, jewelry, uh, accessories, and soon also perishable items. Until now, we didn't deliver perishable items, but now we are working to allow our stores also to deliver that. And how hard was this to build? It seems so complex. Yeah, it's not easy to put it together. You know, you need to be able to build that new model. We had to have technology people to build a platform that allow that model to work. We have operation team that does all that operation. Yeah, and we have marketing team that continue to drive the movement and turn, ask people to pledge and move part of their online shopping back to the community. Obviously you have all those teams, but talk about that development team. I'm interested in that and the operations, you know, it seems like it's very sophisticated. How long did it take? How were you able to pull everything all together? Yeah, I think from technology perspective, it's um, 
the complex side is one integrate the inventory, make sure the inventory is accurate as possible. We measure that all the time. When someone places an order, we can fulfill that uh, because you know we don't have the inventory in our warehouse. Then it's the catalog. That's another complex thing, like how you create for many different catalogs that each store prepare on their online store, how you prepare one unified catalog when it's convenient for the customers to shop from. And the third is the fulfillment, like how you make sure that the feedback, there are no fulfillment mistakes from the store side. And once they, they fulfill how you sync all our operation, like our operation team in the in the sorting area, they see the feedback from the stores and they know if there is missing item or, or something was out of stock. And all that processes and feedback back to the stores is something which is very, very important because we need to learn, like we build processes that we are as one team because we don't have a fulfillment team in our company because we use the stores as fulfillment. So those are the new technology that we invest a lot and, and, and build based on the needs that we see to, to make sure that we make this model uh, works. And how are you able to attract <laughs> customers onto the platform? What, you have a marketing team. How are you getting New Yorkers to, sh- to shop more local? Yeah, I think New Yorkers really want to, one, get the convenient, and second, get the values, learn what the values of shopping NYC. The reason that they really want to try it because they want to support their communities. We also build a program that give back money to the school, like if you know Amazon Smile. So, so we build a similar program where you can attach your account with the school and we give 1% to the school out of your shopping. So we build services that really make the living in New York better when you shop in with shopping in NYC. You get more values than just the shopping because the, the school can get the value out of that. And also we work together with, for example, the real estate players and the property owners to offer new amenity that the stores around the city can offer. And we offer for a building two days of free delivery. So we work on a lot of new services to make it attractive and compelling for the customers to to shop. We are not competing at that stage on pricing and stuff like that, but we definitely much more valuable to to the community when people shop with us. So you're saying that on buildings, you're doing bulk deliveries so that with your neighbors, you can get free delivery, even if you're below the $60 threshold? Exactly. Yeah. So how come right now you're only delivering to certain zip codes? Because New Yorkers may go onto your website and see that their zip code is excluded. How come it's only certain zip codes and when are you going to cover all the zip codes. Yeah, so um, it's important for us when we expand to make sure that we have some stores from every area. We're getting now more and more stores in Manhattan and like in a month, all Manhattan will be open. So Mm -hmm. it's all Brooklyn now, plus uh, some zip code now in Manhattan, but by end of the month, all Manhattan will be open. And we also started to work and develop Queens, I think in the next few months, you will see us all around the, the bars. And what happens when you have two stores in the same category? So let's say two pet stores, for example. Why would one person go to one versus the other? Or can you only have one per category? No, we, we allow everybody to, to join. We are not limiting anybody. The way that it works is that it depends. Like people shop by store, like there are, people that love specific stores, so they go to the store and shop there, or people shop by search. If they need something, they just search. They will see the results of all the stores, and they can choose what they want. They can choose the store that's more local to them if if they see multiple of the same items. It depends. Some of them care about that. Some of them don't care about that, and they just... That's why I'm saying, like, 
there are also values in that for the businesses because they get customers from four or five mile radius because people shop whatever they need. So you've been doing this, you mentioned, for a few years. What surprised you most about this process as you're building this platform? I think the interesting uh, insight that I have is that you asked me at the beginning about that it sounds like a dream. I think people don't feel comfortable now in the place that they are. Like they, they have a lot of conflicts. Like I will give you an example with the school. PTA wants donations and they push people to shop on Amazon where their natural thing is to shop in their communities. And they live in conflict because they want the convenience of this Amazon because they will not walk the, the street anymore and get donation from the local businesses like it was 15 years ago. And that showed me the opportunity for the local businesses and the kind, kind of the crazy world that we are is because some online giant pop up and nobody started this all e-com from the place and that really keep the value of people and align with the value of people. Like there is huge opportunity here. That's, uh, that's something that I feel that making sure that the next big commerce platform should be really aligned with the way that people want to see that. So do you see other giants kind of replicating what you're doing to fit those values? Because the value story is really compelling. Maybe, but I think it's very hard for them to do that. They are not designed to do that and, and think this way. There are a lot of questions and answers to ask and decisions to make to allow you to be in that place. We had to choose a lot of specific direction to allow us to to make sure that we keep that as a first priority for us. So as you've developed this platform and you've been in existence for a while, you've probably aggregated a lot of data. What surprised you about New Yorkers' shopping habits? What do New Yorkers want the most? I think the... I'm really surprised by the mix. Like I see the different stores that people order from. And it's really interesting to see. And nobody know that, right? Like nobody know that you order from this store and this store and this store and, and how your basket looks like. And I think this is the most compelling thing. And I think this is the most compelling because I think this is an important data that we are going to share with the stores because it can create a lot of relationship and a lot of opportunities between the businesses in the community. Why is this so important to New York City and you? Why did you start this in New York City? I started it in New York City because I thought that that's a great city to build that new model and to the build best city. Yeah, the best city from density perspective, innovation, uh, people that are open to try new stuff, and then take it to another another places. And I think it's important for the city because, like, if this model is not exist, we will see more and more packages by Amazon, and those businesses are going to die, and their e-com is not going to be meaningful. That's very clear to me. Yeah, if you don't get the power of scale and you can turn all those stores and real estate into a giant warehouse, <laughs> you know, that can come and be the first to serve the company, the customers, I don't see any long-term value. And it's going to be worth, uh, th that's what I believe. It's going to be worth as those big guys understand that being in the center of cities is... This is the key element because they want to come same day and they will be the same day because they will make it more convenient. Well, it is great what you're doing in terms of helping the little guys fight the big one, helping them be on the side of that war and bringing scale to small businesses that have been hurt so badly and shopping local. Maya Komarov, thank you for stepping onto the New York Launch Pod and sharing your time with us. How do people learn more about you and what you're doing with Shop in NYC. 
you can visit uh, Shopping NYC and you can always, everybody can always write to our support email and we get, we will get it to the right person in our team. So shopping.nyc is the website. And if you want to learn more about the New York Launchpod, you can follow us on social media at NYLaunchpod or visit us online at nylaunchpod.com for transcripts of every episode, including this one. And if you are a super fan of the New York Launchpod, Maya, are you a super fan of the New York Launchpod? Definitely. She's a super fan of the New York Launchpod. (laughs) If you're a super fan, like Maya, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. It is greatly appreciated and does help people discover the show. Thank you for listening to this episode of the New York Launch Pod. For more information, please visit nylaunchpod.com.